So it has been exactly two weeks to the day since our last um, sprinter engine trouble. And so we thought it would be a great time to break down on the side of the road. Yeah, that's where we're at right now. So um, we had a we had a cylinder misfire yesterday started um, through a check engine light. And um, could you turn it on for me? Oh, sorry. <laughs> So basically what's happening is um, we had a cylinder misfire that started yesterday um, just kind of running really rough and uh, through a chicken check engine light and um, we pulled the codes on it and everything and it appeared to be an electrical issue and so we got it back to the campground yesterday um, and today we were just about I don't know maybe a mile from the campground and it died completely so um we we're actually on our way back to the campground to try to figure out what was going on and uh troubleshoot all of this but it decided to break down on the side of the road so that's where we're at currently um we're trying to troubleshoot it on the side of the road basically just we're able to limp it off to a little bit more of a back road so we're not like in the middle of the highway which is where it first tried to die um but we are trying to figure it out right now, so we'll see. Yeah, yeah. What you got? So there was a spot on top of the, uh, just on top of the engine block, uh, top of the turbo hose where the all the wiring is routed, and it was rubbing. I uh, found it on a YouTube video, and um, so it was definitely there was definitely chafed wiring in there. Wiggled it around to see if like if there were two wires in there that were like chafed and touching to see if that was our problem spot. So we're gonna check it out and see if that's what it was. We made it. <laughs> it's only like, what, two or three miles down the road, but uh, it was not going, I mean, it was just starting and then maybe it would let us go 100 feet or so there for a little bit. Uh, it was just getting progressively worse until it wouldn't turn back on again. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna go take a closer look at those wires because obviously that did have something to do with it. So here in a second we'll uh, we'll kind of talk about some of the error codes that it was throwing, but it was throwing like 30 different error, error codes. If if you've already talked about this, let me know. I haven't. No. I'm not going to edit any of this out, so you guys are going to get a raw video. Sorry about that. <laughs> Sorry, not sorry. You're way more gentle on that than I am. I saw you messing with it and I'm just like yanking it up. <laughs> About that gentleness? Like, I don't know. You guys know I have a hard time like talking about any kind of like mechanical issue. I get I get pretty like not like stressed out, but like you get I, stressed out. Is, it, is stressed out a good word? Like <laughs> I like just like immediately want to fix whatever the problem is, and I don't want to do like I don't want to video. I don't want to eat. Um, <laughs> I don't want to do like anything other than like fix our problem. And so I'm kind of, like. One point is I think a better word than stressed out. Yeah. Okay, so All right. take that cover off. Okay. So I can see it on here. So it's that one. This wiring. So pick it up. Just oh, look, under, yeah. look underneath it. Yeah, I see it just from right here. 
Now that's got to have something to do with it. So that is rubbing on. Would you do some hand modeling? It's rubbing back here. Because it sits right down in that groove back there in the back. Yeah. It's a dark down there. Sits in that groove oh, back there. Oh, I have a headlamp on. Oh, you're fine. I have ISO. Yeah, so it's sitting back there in that groove right there. And it's just like wiggling around so much. Can you flip all that, that wiring loom over? Because you can see all of the wires are exposed underneath a little bit. So Can you see that? Uh, yeah. Yeah they're, yeah, they're definitely exposed under there. Let's see. We're, re we're routing this. Okay, so this is going to the... This is going to the ECU. Which I, I think that has to, I mean, because the fact be that... It. So what I ended up doing roadside was just grabbing that wire loom and there's about 30 different wires that are inside of it. And basically I just, I thought that if the two of those wires were rubbing against each other or the wires were rubbing on that little uh, cover back there, if I was to basically massage that wire loom to try to get those wires apart and away from each other just a little bit, it may solve our problem. Because uh, I think it was just getting worse and worse. And another reason I think it might have been a short in there is because it just started really, really small. And if something's shorting out, it's going to generate heat, which is going to uh, kind of melt some of those wires, right, Steph? And then, so I think that's probably what that is. And so the fact that we massaged that loom and got those wires away from each other or away from the short or whatever may. Um, yeah, that's, that's what we think. We're not mechanics. Uh, we're uploading this the same day that we're having this problem. Um, and the reason we're doing that is because we actually want like some uh, some input from if anybody has, if anybody has sprinter mechanics that watches like, our videos. Like especially if we're, like if we're on the right track, if this this sounds like something that could be causing this, um, you know, because we, we think that this is the problem, but at the same time, like it's never that easy. So <laughs> I'm kind of, yeah. I like I'm kind of wary to yeah. like actually say that that's the problem and yeah, be we, confident driving. If we just had to re-insulate some wires, like that'd be pretty, that'd be okay. That'd be super straightforward. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about codes real quick. We're gonna go inside and we're gonna uh, read off the codes that the engine is throwing and see if you mechanics out there can uh, give any kind of uh, direction for us, collaborate on this one and see if we can, see if that's what it is. Okay, so the fault codes that we pulled from our um, code scanner, uh, there's... Which we'll type out and list in the description. Yes, that's a good idea. But we're going to read them off I'm right I'm going to read them off right but now. But they're in the description if you don't want to listen to 12 minutes of reading codes. Yeah. Um, there's 14 of them. So we've got injectors output stage 2 general error. Read the, uh, the code uh, number. Code number. Okay, I was curious if you wanted me to do that. Uh, 2124, that one is 2124-008. Then we have 2503-008, and that is cylinder one injector, short circuit to ground. We have that code for every single injector. So we have that same code six times. Then we have 2025-002, and that is intake manifold, intake manifold pressure sensor signal voltage is too low. After that, we have 2068-004, and that's hot film mass airflow sensor reference signal short circuit or open circuit. Um... That's the exact same code again. I don't know why that's on there twice. Then we have 2249-004. And that's um, alternator with LIN bus mechanical fault. And then same thing again. To, uh, actually, it's a different, different code. 2248-004. And it's the alternator electrical fault. So we've got a mechanical fault and an electrical fault code for the alternator. 
Then we have 1437-001, and that's the catalytic converter temperature sensor signature volt signal volt <laughs> signal voltage is too high. 3137-002, diesel particulate filter, the pressure differential is too low. And that's all for that. Yeah, we're back at the beginning. Okay, so basically all of those except for the, differ uh, the DPF filter. Um, wait, what one was, what was that one? Anyway, they're, they're basically all mechanical or electrical issues. They're all related to short circuits or open circuits. So that's why we feel like it was something to, it is something to do with a ground of some sort or an electrical short. Um, so those wires rubbing together and everything would definitely cause a short or maybe a bad ground. So I think that's something else we need to check tonight is the check the ground on the battery. I can't think of anything else. Okay, so I think I saw in one of our other videos or in somebody else's Sprinter video, uh, the VIN number is helpful um, if need be. Can we give our VIN number out on YouTube? Is that, is that, that that's no problem. I don't care. Nobody, I don't know, you can't, you can't get anything. You no, can't get anything. Nobody's there. gonna steal our, our, or our ID. Anyway, okay, I like to live on the edge anyway, as far as information goes. <laughs> oh, my. I mean, it's you can literally see it through the windshield. Okay, anyway, our our VIN number is WD0PE8450754. And which I'll write that in the description uh, below. Uh, do we have anything else we want to talk about? I don't think so. I think I let's think so. let's get this video up so that like <laughs> we might be able to get some help in it. Please help us. To help us in a timely manner. Um, yeah, we think that's what it is. We're going to insulate those wires because that probably just looks like a good thing to do anyway. Um, I I think I think that's it, right? Yeah, I think that's I think that's good. Okay, <laughs> we appreciate any help that yeah. you can give, and uh, yes. we'll. Thank you so much. Yep, we'll. We're happy we made it back to the campground because at least now we're. Yeah, not on the side of the road. Not on the side of the road. Was dr more dramatic on the side of the road. It's very true. Okay, let's get off here. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye, guys.